Hi everybody, I'm Lady Red. This is Lady Red's Tech Reviews. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Pixel 6 Pro and some things you can do to take care of some of those issues that may be making your Pixel experience less than fantastic. So stay here. Leave a like on the video if you do enjoy the content. Drop a comment if you have any questions. And as always, subscribe to the channel and ring that bell and get all the notifications for the new videos. Number one, battery drain. I'm seeing lots of complaining about battery drain. I don't have a problem with that because I do customize and optimize every single phone I have in my hand for daily use. Even as backup phone, I do the same thing. And I use this rule of thumb. I treat my phone's battery like I do my electric bill. I don't have lights on when I'm not at home. I don't leave things running when I'm not using them. Like, I don't just randomly go turn on the dryer, take my clothes out, and turn it back on and walk away. That's stupid. So, you know, things like that. And you can also treat your phone this way by taking some simple steps. So let's take a look at that now. Extend your battery life. I've seen a few people griping about the battery. I have no complaint about the battery, and I'm telling you the truth when I say this phone's in my hand all day. I'm got this ridiculous TikTok addiction and I'm, I'm always like googling really weird stuff so I mean my phone's in my hand a lot and I don't have any problem with the battery it lasts me I take it off the charger at about 7 30 every morning and I'm on it until midnight and Every now and then, depending on exactly how much TikToking I've been doing that day, I might need to charge it after 14 hours. You know, and that that's not bad battery life. 14 hours is not bad. You can see on the in the last 23 hours and 35. Okay, let's look at my 24 hour usage, and we can see here. My battery level drops and I charge it right back up again. That was last night after about 16 hours of usage. My advice there, if you are having battery issues, turn the screen brightness down even just a little bit. You know, just a little. And that will make a big difference in the battery drain just from the launcher, just from the basic use of the phone, the screen being on. Keep that RAM cleared out. Everything that's running in the background takes battery usage, takes battery power. And if you're keeping that cleared out, then it's not running. You know, every now and then you can run files. And this is not something that you have to do, you know, every day, a couple times a week. Clear out your cache files. It saves space on your phone. And yes, it does make a difference with your battery. Also, what you can do is go into each app. I'm going to turn the bright back up so you can see this. Go into the apps. Okay. If it's an app that you're not using all the time, battery. Restricted. That keeps it from running in the background. When I first noticed battery drain and overheating, I went through this phone and I found the ones that were running the most. And turn them off that's all you've got to do restrict battery usage for the apps that is not that are not running and that's all you got to do that will help extend your battery life that will also help prevent the overheating too because when your phone's using power it's gonna warm up another good tip to follow for your charging to make your battery last longer and perform better in the long run is don't just rush to the charger every time you get below like 30% or 40%. Wait until you are down to the nitty gritty around 5% or less, at least once a week, twice a week if you're a heavy, you know, battery user. But at least once a week, let that sucker drain all the way down to 5% or less, and then plug it in and walk away. Just let it charge. Trust me, it makes all the difference in the world with any phone. I advise my customers uh, this all the time and they always come back and tell me what a difference it makes. So be sure to drain it at least once a week and let it alone, let it charge. When it's done charging, take it off the charger, use it some more. Okay, 
All right, something a lot of people are complaining about, and I have experienced this too, is overheating. Did have this problem with the 5A in certain circumstances, and we're having, we're experiencing it now with the 6 Pro. I have identified a few sources of overheating. Number one is focus mode. First time I noticed it overheating, focus mode was on, and I turned it off, the phone cooled down, and didn't get hot again. The focus mode maybe needs a little tweaking maybe some other apps are trying too hard to turn back on one or the other so turn off your focus mode and go through your app list and deny battery usage to the apps that you're not going to be using a lot of because they don't need to be running in the background anyway and i did find some of that uh, some apps kicking on running in the background also keep your apps clear you know don't just let them sit in the ram for days at a time unless you're going to be using them for something and you want to hold them there but random stuff that you're googling you don't need to hold on to that clear it out another thing that i've seen with the overheating clickbait <laughs> clickbait is everywhere it's everywhere we go it's in twitter it's in reddit it's on facebook it's everywhere and i have noticed even just doing like uh you know you're scrolling through instagram and you see something you like you want to see how much it costs then you click the art you click the link that is the number one thing that will make my phone overheat so you can go and you can still do that shopping just look where you're going and then uh, put it into chrome and try going in that way so let's take a look at some other things you can do to uh, keep your phone from getting hot the Pixel 6 Pro does have a problem with overheating. One instance where I'm seeing overheating as a problem, let's say you're scrolling through Twitter. Oh, hey, that looks interesting. This looks funny. I could use some dog funny moments, some funny dog moments. And you open it up, and yes, it's clickbait. And yes, we have all fallen into this trap. And so we're wanting to look at these funny pictures and cute pictures about these dogs. Well, we got all these ads popping up down here at the bottom. There's an ad there, and there's one here, there's another one, and they just keep going. Here's one at the top now, and pretty soon, that's all this is, is one big, long commercial with a couple of pictures of some dogs being dogs. You know, right here, there are three ads on this, on this. one, two, three. And guess what? My phone's already getting hot. Just that fast. So, stay out of the clickbait traps. Another time I have seen it really get hot is with focus mode. Focus mode is designed to prevent interruptions when you're doing stuff, when you're working with your phone. It's going to drown out and block notifications. Anything coming up on your screen so to turn off focus mode this is what I have done I did notice this pretty quickly and I turned off focus mode and my phone got a lot cooler then you'll go into digital well-being and parental controls scroll down focus mode right here just turn that off one other instance when I've seen some real overheating. All right, you're going to check your email and look, let's see what's on sale. And you've got this, and you're going to go shopping. This is heating up the phone more than anything else. The longer I spend shopping through a link, that I have gone, gone through either in my email or Instagram, anywhere except for going directly to the website, I am seeing some serious overheating. And I did put this to the test last night. You can see this is BoxyCharm. Uh, anywhere in here. The phone is steadily warming up. And the more pages I go to, the hotter it gets. You see, I'm going from page to page. I want to look at the bag. So we're just going to keep shopping. This is shopping online. And it, it is. It's getting warm right across here. A lot of times... When it's getting hot, it starts from down here. This time it's right 
through the middle. In order to prevent this, this is what I did. I went directly to the website. And there was no overheating. Yeah, it's cooling down already. It's still just a little bit warm. It's going to take it a minute to cool down. But when I went directly to the website without following an external link, there was no overheating. So from just that one thing, this is where I tested it last night, was with BoxyCharm. Don't follow those external links. Go directly to the website. And something else, and this is just a common sense trick that many people just forget about. Clear that old RAM out. Clear out everything you've been doing from time to time. And that will also help with overheating. All right, something that liquid glass. It's 2021, people. Tempered glass is fine if you're, you know, if you have a side or a rear mounted fingerprint scanner. But for an in screen scanner, I have had very bad luck with tempered glass on those phones. I've put them on phones at work, and customers always come back and they say their fingerprint won't read, and it's because there's a gap between the glass and the screen, or because something has gotten on the glass, it's gotten scratched, whatever. Cell Helmet Liquid Glass. There are many other brands, but that's the one that I prefer is the Cell Helmet brand. Uh, it's backed by a warranty, and you can purchase $50, $100, or $300. I think there's even a $500 screen option. It just depends on which one you prefer. We're going to take a look at that right now. Okay, today we're going to put on the Cell Helmet Liquid Glass with $300 screen repair guarantee. We're putting it on my Pixel 6 Pro. The last thing I want to talk about today is the fingerprint scanner. Everybody is t complaining about this fingerprint scanner. Number one, make sure your hands are clean. Any fingerprint scanner is not going to read if you have stuff on your hands. If you've got lotion on your hands, if you've just put on you know, some lotion or some hand cream, if you are eating something that's messy or cooking, anything at all, you know, cleaning something and you've got some stuff on your hands, that fingerprint scanner is not gonna read your fingerprint. I wanted to show you, this is, I mean, I have not done anything special to my screen. You can see fingerprints on it. I do have cell helmet liquid glass on this screen and in another video I'll show you how to put that on yours. I prefer that over tempered glass any day. Ta-da! The fingerprint scanner works. Let's see it again. Let's use this finger. Double tap. Press and hold. It's not immediate. It's going to register your fingerprint. You'll feel a slight vibration but it works and my hands are really really cold right now when my hands are cold when my hands are hot as long as they're clean and dry the fingerprint scanner works flawlessly if my finger is not lined up correctly let's say I'm halfway off of it it still picks up more often than not if you move your fingerprint you move your finger it's not going to read properly. If you're doing this, like if you're holding your phone and you're not paying attention, but still, I'm not seeing the same problem with the fingerprint scanner that everyone is complaining about. See, it's working every time. The difference, clean hands. 
Also, we're not just clean. If you have dry skin problems, if you have very dry skin, and this, through the end of the day, after handling money all day and stock, you know, I've been putting up stock all day and my hands get kind of dried out, then I start seeing a few glitches with it. But that's with every fingerprint scanner. You want to make sure that you don't have dry skin or any kind of sores, you know, from contact dermatitis on your fingers because that will also interfere with the fingerprint scanner. Make sure you keep your screen clean. You can see mine. I keep mine pretty clean. There's some fingerprints and stuff on it, but I keep my screen pretty clean. Liquid glass works so much better. It is well worth the extra cost. Way better than tempered glass. I sell it in my store. I highly recommend it. Tempered glass is fine if you just want something on top of your screen. The difference between tempered glass and liquid glass, liquid glass bonds with the glass in your screen to make it harder. What also is a nice little side effect, it helps you keep your screen cleaner. I talk on my phone a lot throughout the day. I have makeup on my face. You can see it's not all over my phone. Let me show you a phone without liquid glass. This is my X4. There is no liquid glass on it. And you can see down here little scratches. And we've got little scratches here on the screen. Something stuck to it. It's not as smooth. You know, if this happens to a phone with an end screen fingerprint reader, that finger, if you get a scratch across that, it's not going to read correctly. Tempered glass can lose the seal and create a small space that you may not even be able to see between the glass and the screen on your phone that's going to interfere with your fingerprint reader i actually quit carrying tempered glass for the samsung s20 and s10 in my store because of this because it was creating such an interference with the in screen fingerprint reader especially when there is a curved display that's just an automatic space created between the glass and the screen throw the temper glass away it's 2021 get with the program and get yourself some liquid glass my favorite brand is cell helmet you may have another favorite brand but it works so much better all right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. These cats steal the show sometimes. But thank you so much for tolerating them if you stayed all the way to the end. And thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helps you with your 6 Pro. I know these steps that I have taken have certainly helped me so much. Keeping it hot, keeping it charged, and uh, not having too many issues with the fingerprint reader. And it keeps my screen, the, the liquid glass keeps my screen protected. There's not a single scratch on it. And if you could see the inside of my purse, you would know what kind of a miracle that is. It's a dangerous area inside my purse. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed this content. Drop a comment if you have any more questions. I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, subscribe to my channel, ring the bell, and get the notifications for the next videos. See you in the next one.